Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, I'm gonna show you how to get a beautiful rusty patina look with supplies you already have in your studio or maybe even in your kitchen cabinet. We're gonna make some faux rust today and this video is sponsored by our friends at Lava Soap. I'll have a link in the video description to the store locator so you can find a location near you that's selling this and I love it because it gets my hand clean, my hands clean after all of this grimy work and it leaves them soft afterwards. So no harsh chemicals, it does the job without drying your skin. So I want to thank them for their support. So without further ado, let's go to the table and I'll show you how to get this beautiful rusty look. Let's take a look at the finished samples here uh, so you know what we're going for. This is a, just a beautiful, rough, rusty texture. No tetanus shot required. And it's an, an effect that you can get at home really easily without buying any expensive uh, stuff. We'll probably use stuff you already have. Um, and if you don't have the gritty stuff we're going to use and you don't want to buy it, you could still just do this with paint and you're going to have a very similar look. You just won't have that rough texture. But um, but it's, it's very easy to do. And you could actually just grab some cinnamon out of the spice cabinet and you could use that if you needed some grit but you didn't want to go buy anything so then it would smell good too how about that so what we're gonna do uh, to begin this one was just done on a piece of embossed cardstock and I, I felt like I lost a lot of the texture with the texture of the paint this one was done on a piece of matte board and what I did was I tried to die cut some gears out of it but it didn't cut all the way so I was just peeling off layers and I just kind of uh, just you know brushed over it and got some really interesting um, texture that way so this time I thought well this is better because this is even cheaper what I did was I took an oatmeal box that was in the recycling bin I embossed one like four and a half by five by six and a half piece and then I cut a bunch of gears out and what I'm gonna do is just hot glue those onto that background and then that's gonna give us our substrate for which we're going to put our paste on so so um, just go ahead and glue stuff down. Watch your fingers. If you're going to use a wet glue, then just glue it down and put a heavy book on top of it and let it dry so that everything sticks down really well. And you just want to overlap your um, different elements and just fill in the space. Probably that first embossed panel is not really going to show when we're done, but at least we have something there. And uh, when you're done, or now even, you could trim off any bits that are hanging out or you could just let them overhang. Um, I plan on maybe putting this on a card or maybe a canvas, so I'm not going to bother with that yet. If you have any glue uh, strings or anything, you can heat it with a heat gun and dissolve those, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So to make our rust paste, it's very easy. We're going to use a few different colors of paint we're gonna use like a burnt umber this is one of the browns from the Jane Davenport uh, new neutrals set I'm going to use a burnt sienna color which is kind of like more of your rusty color like that's more of your iron that's more of your rust we're going to also uh, want some copper we're going to want a little bit of uh, teal or turquoise and it doesn't, and acrylic brands will work together. You don't need to get everything from the same brand. And we're going to want a little bit of white as well. So those colors are going to have the texture added to them. And these are going to be our patina colors. And of course, if you had another color of rust you wanted to get or another kind of texture like for stucco or whatnot, you can do that. So I am pouring on a little bit of texture grit. Now this is just called texture powder, but there is a product at, and I got it because I wouldn't have paid six bucks for this. I got it because it was on clearance for buck fifty. Um, if you're at the hardware store though, you can get a product that is called, um, I think it's called like, uh, it's a paint additive that is meant for putting in paint that is going to be going on stairs so it does so it's not skiddy it's like non-skid texture additive and it comes in a little bag for like a buck or two it's not expensive and you can use that or you can use a very fine sand or you could use cinnamon um, from the cupboard especially if you had some old old cinnamon that maybe wasn't so potent anymore and you wanted to get rid of it that that'll be perfect for this you just need something fine that's going to get you that grit um, you could use a playground sand like a really fine playground sand that might work and it but it might also be too gritty so I'm gonna wipe off the extra there then I'm gonna mix up this so you'll know if you have too much if it's like really pasty like a hard paste um, or like a dough consistency that is too much you don't want that much um, I think if you get too much texture in there you run the risk of it not um, bonding very well there we go so that's probably about as thick as you want it right there Let's bring a little of that up to the camera just so you can kind of see. I don't know if you can really see the grit in there, but if I spread it, you can see that it's got a that it's got a nice um, matte grit to it. And of course, you can experiment it um, to your liking. 
you just don't want like a hard like a heavy paste that might not adhere very well so then what you're going to do I like to actually apply this first layer with a brush and I use like a really stiff um, foliage angle brush any sort of like stiff uh, brush will work good for this but I like this because I know I'm not gonna hurt it at all and I'm really working it into the nooks and crannies so you want to do that all over the entire background here and you want to look at it at all different angles to make sure that you have got that color in everywhere if you desire some more texture you can actually stipple it on by that I mean kind of pounce the paint that will give you a little bit more of a rough texture but I recommend just kind of twirling it around as you go and making sure that you haven't you don't see any of that raw cardboard it's not a huge deal if you do but it's just gonna look a little bit more uh, realistic and then we're going to dry this now at this point you can see uh, hopefully you can see on camera how it's got this really beautiful matte weathered uh, rusty iron look but it's just very one-dimensional at this point so at this point I actually like to put the metal color down and so I'm going to use a bronze and I like to use a nice big flat brush and my choice is a synthetic just because uh, like a one with golden bristles because I feel like um, I can control it really well and I'm just gonna lightly drag that across and that's going to give me like kind of a peek into what kind of metal we had underneath there and um, I like to do something that's kind of that's kind of warm like a like a copper you could use a gold I do have a video on my channel on how to do faux pewter so I will link that up so you can check that out uh, if you if that's the kind of metal you want to do I love the old rusty gear look so after we have that what I recommend that you do is dry it again and because we have so much texture grit in here we're not going to get the bubbling when we go and heat it so just don't heat it up too high because you do have hot glue here and you don't want everything to peel off but let a gentle like heat just to get that top layer dry is fine now for the cut for the real rusty color this kind of reddish color here I like to apply it with the palette knife and the reason I like to do this is because it will um, help me from being too fussy okay so we're just gonna spackle that on And you could put on as much or as little rust as you want. And if you wanted to do the copper after, you could. You could do this rusty layer um, underneath it. But I, I like to kind of alternate the layers so I can adjust as I go. If you do end up with, um, like you got, you got somewhere you don't want it, you can go in with a brush and you can... Um, like I can take this brush and I can go in and get some out of the center if I feel like I've got I've clogged up too much or if I feel like I even just want to tap a little more on somewhere I can do that as well and the great thing about making your own is that you can mix up more if you want to so if you feel like you got some big gobs you can go in and just um, just tap on like this now I am going to dry this I'll tip it to the light so you can kind of see it a little bit better we're gonna dry this before we do our final patina so this is pretty dry. It doesn't have to be all the way dry because you'll see why in just a second. Um, what I'm going to do now is grab a squirt bottle of water, just like a little, a little uh, Mr. Spray bottle is good for this. And I'm going to squirt out some on my palette. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of teal and quite a bit of white. A little bit more white. This is for the oxidization that, that you would get on your rust. A little more water there you want it really loose and then what you're going to do is you are going to add a bunch of it in one area at the top of your um, the top of your panel here and then you're going to spritz it and that's going to help it run and give you that look and if it if some of the rust drips in then you're going to get a streaky rust that looks really uh, realistic and you generally have more of this up high because um, you know things rust rain like things up higher usually get a little bit more weathering and um, uh, kind of effect from nature and then you get the rain running on it and dripping it down so that's what we're doing here we're just trying to mimic what nature would do 
and this is pretty sparing. I did too much on my other sample piece, so I'm trying not to do quite so much here. And I'll show you the sample piece where I, what I mean, where I think I went a little overboard. I feel like I want a little bit to dilute that a little bit. And the nice thing about this is you can always add more if you want to. And that's why we did the drying, just so we could secure some of those layers. Okay, so I want to show you this first one here that I did. I thought that I had too much teal in it, so for this one I went a little bit easier with that. If I want, I can do a little bit of the, uh, the teal here and there. Maybe just kind of get a, some of the edges of some gears just to highlight them a little bit. Oops, there we go. Sorry about that. And then if it's too bold, just soften with a spray bottle. So that's why it's nice to work on something a little bit heavier, like uh, like that cereal box that I'm working on, because that way you don't you have a little bit of weight there. Um, so that you don't, it doesn't collapse on your buckle. And then you simply let that dry, do as much or as little as you want, let it dry. If you decide you want more of the red rust on it, you can do that after, but uh, it's a pretty easy, easy uh, solution there. So what I'm going to do is go wash my hands with lava soap, and I will show you this when it's all dry. I did want to show you this other little technique that I just kind of started doing before I cleaned up. I'm just like picking up a little bit of this thinned down paint on my finger, and then I can, I find that I can really go in there and highlight just specific areas and, um, and it works really well. I don't go, get, seem to get overboard, but then I can make all these different little gears stand out a little bit. So, uh, give that a try too. It seems to work really well. And then I, I get a, a much better control than just what I get with the spray bottle. Spray bottle is great because it keeps you from being too uh, detailed, but look, I can even get some of that texture from the background panel just by wiping it with my finger. I really like that. I think this really looks like something that's been like neglected in a junkyard for, um, you know, for years. And who doesn't want that look on their art, on their paintings, right? Who doesn't want that on their cards? I care enough to send you something that looks like it's been neglected in a junkyard for years. You're welcome. How fun was that? It was quick, easy, and you had all those supplies at home, didn't you? You had something that would work. You didn't have to go out and buy new. Again, I want to thank our friends at Lava Soap. You can find a store that sells this near you. There's a link in the video description with a store locator, and my hands came out perfectly clean, as always, feeling soft as ever because of the conditioners that are in this soap, and of course, the pumice power that scrubs away all that grimy paint that we were just playing with. I love that. I want to thank you so so much for watching if you love these videos to show you how to kind of get the look of the expensive products on the cheap with stuff you already have give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting